it's so nice to be here. And I didn't knock over the water table, which is, I was having kind of um, obsessive fantasy about crushing it down as I got up to read. Um, and I haven't done it, so that's good. There's still time here. It's really nice to be here, thank you. And it's lovely to be with uh, Phoebe and Amy and have the wonderful musical accompaniment from Rachel, so thank you. I'm just going to read um, from Jack Self. Um, a kind of, uh, the book is a kind of story in poems, so um, there's a kind of narrative, and occasionally when I do readings, I kind of fill in some of this narrative, so I think I'm going to kind of do that today, so I'll just kind of go through as far as I can get in the time that I've got um, with um, these bits of this, this poem. And maybe what you need to know, if you don't know, is that um, the book's about a character called Jack Self, who's just a boy kind of growing up. It's about his, his childhood, and he lives in a house called Lannanby. So that house kind of features. And one of the kind of narratives in the book is that he's, he's kind of lost his, his shadow, he's lost, he can't find his shadow, his shadow's gone missing, which is a kind of old trope really, you find it in fairy tales and bits and pieces, and that's how um, the book kind of starts, I suppose, with this realisation, he realises that it's not there, and he gets it back, and he gets it back at a kind of price, I think. Jack Self's quality can't be bought or stolen. Mudder hasn't bottled it. Mugging is here, hasn't brought it home in his briefcase. The farmer hasn't clipped its weighty foam from his blackest sheep. The hawk man, with a rag of meat in his leather glove, can't bring it stooping from the sky. Thomas Cat hasn't fetched it from the farmyard to lay still warm at Jack's feet. The dark continent Jack self peels from the flank of a Frisian cow, ties to his ankles, and drags across the flat land at midday, doesn't prove his substance. The night is made of what he needs. He moonwalks in daylight, afraid like snow, he'll wane or drift before he can hold the road out front, the fields behind, and the earth in the churchyard. So Jackson crawls to the coal shed and eats. Lambie's lovely coal shed, shed a dark glitter. To spend long mornings down at the end of Lambie's gravel path, beside the road, waiting for the coal man with his lorry and his locked sacks. But those mornings end. They end with school. The names of things and their relations adding and taking away the names of things and their relations adding and taking away. Jackson is taken away from the rest of the class and added to a corner most days. Days that stink of cowgum, mouldy silence and the screech of Miss Clouds chalk stick on the blackboard. A wall is for staring at, a desk for sleeping at. Jackson can do that. There's nothing to read and the world's written backwards. 
At lunchtime, Mr. Workbench, the headmaster, mums the Lord's Prayer, and everyone and Jaxa must join in. Jaxa has many trespasses, but no daily bread is baked in the school's homes. He must ask the dinner ladies forgiveness for the cartilage stew and spreadable carrots, the flavour of warm steel tins. A floorboards for eating off, a fart for letting off. Get thee, Jack Self, to the trough, for you are pig slow. A staring calf and can't even hold a pencil stop in your hooves to let her. See, Miss Clout says to Muggins here, see what he's written all these hours and days. And she shakes the sugar paper sheet of wobbly noughts. Standing over her, Mr. Workbench solemnly inclines his one thought at a time head. The jack sounds far and away, his mind a corner of beehives, his fingers a box of matches, his nose the afternoon rain, his ears yesterday, his eyes green eyes, his tongue an earwig before it hatches. Where are you? Mother cries from Lambie's doorstep. Where are you? He's not at school, that's for sure. He isn't going to school for a while. A small brown bird in the understory of a copse. He's listening to that, scuffling in the leaves. He's out of earshot, the year on the turn. Acres around Lambie, given over to emptiness. Green tongue of longing, he disappears down by hedgehog path and badger path. Jack self happens with the clouds into sunlight, water damaged sky, silver in the floor, and Jack self on all fours, his skin. Skin his talk or go. Hounds tongue, ox eyes, birds foot, rose hips, grain of the wind in a buzzard's wing bones, empty as the sky. Crab apples, oak apples, applejack, cold under his ear. Holes in his fox gloves, his foot leather black and supple. Now he knows his own mind with it. Goes by cattle grid and cattle trough. I see sloshings in him. Fears the dog and Lucifer, who glints at night where he trembles, shut in everywhere with his own heart rush and the trees roar. A white root threading the muck under a rotted log wakes him. Bent pale stalks, leaves let go to dry curl and turn on the surface of the sky. Small panes of it where the tarmac gives out. He returns nowhere to somewhere by standing there in sunlight, 
It's flicking over him like, like that. He's been this way before he couldn't remember anyway, but onwards and upwind, along a fence line to see what's happening, down in a ditch where the still dark stands. One whole night away, awake to the dew in his eyelashes, and now he's into his second day abroad in the wild, his maths gone, and his handwriting too, and even his speaking voice scaling over, scaling up. He's looking for his shadow, of course, keeps catching the edge of it, the swing of it, the flicker of it follows it where he's never followed before. Is standing long moments at a black pond's edge, the place his shadow has drained into. Hey! Jack self cries. I know you're under there. I can feel something under there, he says. And he'll be back here. He knows he will, but he doesn't know why. Looking for his shadow, one way or another, is why. But listen, the boys of the village have formed a search party and come marching out over the fields and onto the marsh. These boys from school, half hoping to find his body face down, in black water. No chance. They have a name for him, these boys. They gave it to him at school, and now they call it across the flat land. Peewit. Peewit. A little one. Drab. Skyborn, with nothing of the gut unraveling acumen of the scavenger. This is Jackson limping across marshland, making a decoy of himself, piping up when the day goes dim, so close to the ground is almost it. Small wonder, Peewit is the name the other boys have given him, not Jackdaw, not Rook. The gods are bracken and flighted black plastic sacks will expose themselves to the pilgrim who has faith in the star at the centre of the crab apple in the ditch full of frog spawn and the shed door hinged with spider's webs. So it comes to pass for Peewit, with his stick in his right hand, as he tramps the far out lanes with those who had diminished him, a breeze starts to latch in the dust. The fox glove jangles, his legs break, and he goes down, his eyes a white flutter in his head. The boys circle him where he fits, grinding his teeth so hard they sing. And when they heft him, heavier than he should be, his bird's soul batters into him. They process so slowly, the lights all gone by halfway home, when peewits no longer between them has flown. And blank with terror, the boys go round and round in the dark and cold, and are not ever
Axel and Jeremy Wren are setting night lines in the kidney coloured pool, all the streams of England run into. Jackson's fretting. All night the guide will hang, their hooked lips mouthing into the waterworks and bloodstreams of all England. All night gaffed, their bullion flexing until Jeremy Wren bashes them at dawn with his hardwood priest. Wren, who says his granddad built the southern domes Jesus needed to stable his beasts, thinks Jack serves a soft lad, a quick tear, a worry wit, and ties off another triple barbed spinner. So Jack Self rolls up his jeans, takes one end of the nylon line looped to a tent peg and wades into the chocolatey shallows. Slippery stoned, ice cool fish path where no one has stood for a thousand years. When Wren's not looking, Jackson stamps his foot, and all the calm 